Okay, this is a lecture on QR decomposition. And before we talk about QR decomposition, let me remind you what we've talked about already. So we learned about bases of subspaces. So a basis of a subspace is a list of vectors so that every vector in the subspace V is uniquely expressible as a linear combination of the vectors in the list. We learned about orthonormal bases. On orthonormal basis is a basis of orthonormal vectors. And these are particularly nice because all your geometric computations work the way you think they do, computing lengths and angles and things like that, and they are very efficient for computing orthogonal projections with. And we learned that we can compute compute orthonormal bases using the Gram-Schmidt algorithm. There we go. So QR decomposition is a way of encoding the orthonormal basis concisely using matrices. And you should know about it because it's useful and because it's the language that lots of textbooks and computer algebra systems will use to talk about orthonormal bases. So let's learn this language. It's just a language for talking about the sort of orthonormal bases which we have already learned are useful and have learned to compute using the Gram-Schmidt algorithm. Okay. So the Gram-Schmidt algorithm takes a list of vectors, v1, v2, blah, 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 vk, which are a basis of some subspace L, and it returns a new list of vectors, u1, u2, blah, 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 uk, which is orthonormal and is also a basis for L. So for example, if the input to the Gram-Schmidt algorithm were v1 and v2 like this, the Gram-Schmidt algorithm would return as output the vectors u1 and u2 given here. And since these are both bases for the same subspace, we could write v1 and v2 as a linear combination of u1 and u2. And that's what I've done here. Notice that v1 is a multiple of u1, v2 is a linear combination of u1 and u2. If I had a v3, it would be a linear combination of u1, u2, and u3, and so forth. So here I've just taken those same equations and I've rewritten them using matrices. So this matrix equation here exactly encodes the vector equations here. V1 is u1 times the square root of 2 plus 0 times u2. And V2 is u1 times 1 over the square root of 2 plus u2 times root 6 over 2. And this first matrix, u1, u2 here, that's the matrix we're going to call Q. And since Q has orthonormal columns, Q transpose Q is the identity. And this second matrix over here, this matrix we're going to call R. And notice that R is upper triangular. That's the fact that R is upper triangular corresponds to the fact that V1 is a multiple of U1, V2 is a linear combination of U1 and U2, if there were V3, it would be a linear combination of U1, U2, and U3, and so forth. And just to remember last time, the columns of Q are an orthonormal basis for the image of A, and the orthogonal projection onto the image of A is given by Q, Q transpose. Um, some minor details. Um, QR decomposition is not quite unique. If I were to switch the sign of everything in this column and 
switch the sign of everything in this row. So this column, I switch signs and get this column. And this row, I switch signs and get this row. That would also be a QR decomposition. And here are some other versions where I've switched signs in other places. But that's the only freedom. QR decompositions are unique up to switching the signs like this. Um, some people will normalize that the diagonal entries of R are always positive, like they are in my first example here. Uh, but your textbook doesn't do that. And as we will see later, some computer algebra systems do and some don't. So I am not going to. I'm going to say QRD compositions are just defined up to side. Uh, also, I've been writing things with my first matrix rectangular and my second matrix square. Some people pad out that first matrix to make it square. So they take these guys here, which form an orthonormal basis, for the image of A, and they add on another vector at the end here to make an orthonormal basis for R3. Or Rn, depending what dimension we're in. And when they pad out an extra column here, they put a row of zeros on the bottom. So if we call this first matrix Q1 and Q2, Q1 are my original columns and Q2 are the extra columns I added on, then the columns of Q1 are an orthonormal basis for the image of A, and the columns of Q2 are an orthonormal basis for the image of P perpendicular. Uh, your textbook does not do this. Your textbook defines QRD composition using a rectangular matrix and a square matrix, the way I've done it on the slides before this one. But you should be aware that some people would instead have a square, bigger Q matrix and an R matrix of extra zeros at the bottom. Okay, and there's one more very important thing to be aware of, which is we teach you the Gram-Schmidt algorithm because we want you to understand how it works. Maybe some of you will even be implementing it. And there are also variants of it that come up throughout mathematics and it's worth understanding why it works. But you should never, at the end of this course, compute the Gram-Schmidt algorithm by hand again. After you are done with this course, anytime you want to compute an orthonormal basis, you should bring up your favorite computer algebra system and use the built-in QR decomposition command. So let me show you how that works in Mathematica and how that works in MATLAB. Okay, so here we are in Mathematica. I'm going to input the same matrix that I've been using as my running example. One, zero, negative one, one. Uh, one moment. There we go. Zero, negative one. If you want to see that matrix looking pretty, here it is. And then I'm just going to call the command QR decomposition A. And here's my output. And if you want to make that output look pretty, again, we'll use the matrix form command to make that look pretty. Here we go. Um, so a couple of things to notice here. So here is my Q matrix, except it's transposed from what I did in the slides of what your textbook does. So Mathematica's convention is transposed to your textbook's convention. It gives you a matrix whose shape is the transpose of the shape of A. And, uh, and here is your R matrix. Um, that's Mathematica. Let me show you MATLAB. OK, here's MATLAB. So once again, I want to enter that matrix. Same example as before. Sorry. I use, I've been using Mathematica for about 20 years now. And the only time I ever use MATLAB is when I teach this course. So you'll notice a real difference in my uh, fluency and ability with the two systems. 
Okay, so if you just type QR of A, what you're going to get is your Q matrix. So this is the matrix Q, it's the same shape as A. However, Mathematica, however, MATLAB, sorry, does a funny thing, which is that its functions often compute more stuff than it returns as output. And if you want to get the more stuff, you need to store it in a variable. So if I take the variables Q and R and store Q, R of A in them, then it computes both the Q matrix and the R matrix. And strangely, my Q matrix is now a square matrix instead of a rectangular one. My R matrix has the extra row of zeros added on. You can also notice that, math, that MATLAB does not have the convention of making the diagonal entries of R be positive. So here they are, our MATLAB, which computed an example with negative values. Uh, if you do want your Q matrix to be rectangular, I'll call my new variables Q small and R small. I'll store Q. Then the command you want is QR A comma zero. Now my Q small matrix is just the rectangular part and my R matrix is just the square part from the top here. And as you know, if you're used to working with MATLAB, all of the different variables you've stored are, are stored over in this little workspace area. I can click on them. Here's my Q matrix. There it goes. Here's my Q small matrix. They're all put in these nice little grids for me to see. Um, so again, again, Q, R, A, comma, zero will compute for things I've been talking about in this lecture. Just Q, R will pad out the Q matrix of extra columns and put extra zeros on the end of R. Okay, and so here are those commands again, along with the comments I made about them. Um, I talked to some people who do uh, large applied computations, because I don't actually do that. And I asked them, what system should I make sure to cover in these slides? So they said Mathematica, MATLAB, and also NumPy. I don't use NumPy myself, uh, so I'm just trusting them. But according to the people I talked to, these are the NumPy commands for QR decomposition. Okay, so once again, these are the things you should know about how you should actually compute Gram-Schmidt in your favorite computer algebra system. See you next time.